In this lesson, we're going to step through my favorite example in the Robot Educator Challenges, line following. I've got this big fancy white piece of paper here that has a uh, nice black line on it, on a white background, and I'm going to try and get the robot to follow this line. Okay, so I've started up a new program here called Line Follow. And if you don't already have your Robot Educator tab opened up, then click right here. And we're going to go into the Common Palette. And I'm going to scroll down until I find my favorite. There we go, Follow Line. Okay, these start out with a challenge brief that tries to explain to you what's going on. In this case, we have a video. And if I hit Play, you can see that they're trying to explain to you without words what's happening, that when it sees light, the robot kind of goes forward and to the right a little bit. And when it sees darkness, the robot goes forward to the left a little bit. And if you just keep doing that wiggle, you end up following a line. It's pretty clever, really. OK, um, next up is this building guide. And if you click on the building guide, it actually gives you all of the instructions you need to build your driving base and your light module down. Um, these are also in the book that came with the educational kit, but if I click on one of them, you can see it just kind of gives you the step-by-step -step pieces for what you need to do. Okay. Um, the last thing down here at the bottom that was the most important, that's the programming guide. And that's where it gets interesting. Let me just scroll all the way down. There we go. This tells us this is step one out of 17 in these instructions. And it looks like for step one, they want us to grab a loop block and put it down. So let me grab a loop block and put that down. And the next step is usually the configuration panel. Let's take a look. Oops. There we go. And sure enough, step two shows us what the loop's configuration panel should be. And it says control forever. And that box is not checked. And it's not checked here. OK, so we're good. So I'm going to go to step three. And step three, it looks like they want us to put a switch inside of our loop. So let me grab that switch. And let me try and plunk it inside of the loop. There we go. Cool. And let's look at the configuration panel for the switch now. Well, the first thing it tells me, it's got an arrow here to say, look here, is I need to use a light sensor. So let's change this to light sensor. Good. And we'll keep going. And now this is a little bit weird. This is, this is kind of an effect of Lego trying to explain stuff to us without using words so that regardless of the language you use, you can understand this. Um, it kind of has an arrow down at this box down here and another arrow at this one with question marks. And it's asking us to, to look at what are the values? What's the reading in here? Um, and it just so happens that I've downloaded a program with lamp bricks before here, so or that uses, I'm sorry, the light block before, so I have a, a live value of what the light is that my light sensor sees right now. Um, if you didn't, you could just hit download at this point, and once you've downloaded, it activates that light sensor. Um, but if we step through the next couple of steps just to get an idea of what's going on, it looks like it says, what's the value here? And then I click again, and it says, what's the value here? And, um, and it looks like if you just kind of look at these steps, it says it's 20, then it's 60, and they pick 40. So I think what it's trying to tell us, OK, I know what it's trying to tell us is, Check out what's your value when you have your light sensor on the white part of your paper or whatever you're using for the line. And mine is roughly 80. It's 78, let's say. And then what is it when you put it on the dark part of the line? And in this case, it looks like it's 39. I'll call it 40. So it looks like they're picking a number between 20 and 60 to get 40, and I want to pick a number between 40 and 80-ish, so I guess I'll pick 60. That's kind of in the middle. And I'm going to put my 60 in that box right there. Okay, let's go on to the next step. 
All right, now it looks like it wants us to put a motor block up in the uh, top of our switch. So let me grab a motor block, a move block, sorry, and put that in the top of my switch. And let's see what the configuration panel for this one is. It looks like the configuration panel, look at this, it says only check motor port B and have it come to a complete stop. Okay. Let's see what happens next. Ah, and then we're gonna put another move block in there. And this one says set just C going. So I'm gonna uncheck B. I'm gonna have it run at 50% power. And all of these things that I'm doing, I'm just looking at the arrows. Here there's an arrow for C checked, so I'm checking C. Here it says 50% power, so I changed that to here. Here it says unlimited, so let's change that to unlimited. And we'll keep going. Looks like we got another motor block at the bottom there. So we're going to put that motor block down at the bottom. Let's look at its configuration pile. Two arrows here again. C should be checked, and we have the stop sign. So let's see. I'll uncheck B. I'll leave C checked, and I'll do stop. And I bet you guess what's coming up. Another motor block, another move block. So we put that move block right there. And the configuration panel for that one is unlimited at 50%. So I'll fix the 50. I'll make it just B, because there's an arrow here. So I'm going to make it just B. And unlimited. OK. And you can kind of see what's going on in this switch, right? If 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 the light is greater than 60, we're going to go this top path, which means motor B is going to stop and motor C is going to start. So we'll kind of go forward and turn one way. And if the lights otherwise, we'll turn off motor C and we'll make motor B move. So we're going to kind of do that wiggle that we wanted. OK, so let's go on to step 16. Oh, step 16 says to download, so let's download. And, oh, looks like we're in good shape. All right, let's give it a shot. And of course, we can go the other way, too. And it looped forever, so I had to stop it myself. Now, my fancy test sheet is nice, but you don't actually need it. You can use black tape on a white floor or any sort of dark stripe on a light background. The hallways around my office have a great pattern in the tile that works really well for this.